Welcome to Mark Medley's Everything Disney. Discovered to the Western world in 1901. Yes, yeah, so it's a giraffe. It's related to the giraffe. You gotta look at its head. It's got little two little horns it's called ossicones. It's the same thing that giraffes have. <laughs> giraffes are only a seven vertebrae uh, in their necks. It's the same as us. There's a just bigger. There's really no difference. Now, on my left side and on my right side, we have the greater Kudu. Second tallest pants over here in this forest, shouting nocturnal. These are females. Look to the left. That's right next to my truck there. The greater Kudu. Hello. Oh, no, we're getting a little close there. I leave them alone. Well, actually, leave her alone. Female. Females don't have horns. The males do. I see females so far. Now look to your left side. Bottom left corner there. That is a black rhino. You see that? It's a rhino. It's a rhino. Here for the bunny. Here for the rhino. <laughs> Coming up on our right here is called a bongo. Now these are known as bongos, ghosts of the forest and rarely seen. One of the largest antelopes here in this forest. Pretty cool. Their nickname, by the way, is called the ghost of the forest, so you guys have all seen the ghost. <laughs> All right, my friends, we're going to leave these guys alone. We're going to head on towards the Safi River. So I want you to think of one really big animal that loves to live in the river. Who knows what that animal might be? No gators here. Try again. Hippo bottom it. There you go. Keep striking out. Keep striking out. Yeah, he's, he's definitely pooping up for the time being. Of course, if you don't know what Pumbaa means, it means foolish and silly in Swahili. We're using it in a silly term. It's all right. <laughs> now, keep your eyes on the water, my friends. On the right side, we have lots of pelicans floating around, and I just saw a hippo just go under the water. So keep your eyes out. Those are really big pelicans, aren't they? They're called pink back pelicans because they'll get pinkish backs during mating season and have a big wingspan, about seven to nine feet wide. As I come up to my left side, you'll see a bloat of hippopotamus. That's what you call a group, a bloat. They get around 5,500 pounds, and they can stand in the water for only minutes at a time, believe it or not. It's pretty quick, isn't it? Also, by the way, my truck only goes about 8 miles per hour. These hippos on land can run about 20 miles per hour. Heads up. You guys smell that? That's called defecation. So we're going to move on. We're going to move on. It stinks out here. We're going to keep going. Yep, yep, yep. Lots of hippo defecation. So we're going to keep on going. It gets worse. We're going to make our way over this bridge real quick. On to the Savannah here shortly. Bit of an older bridge here, hang on. Make it nice and easy. Gotta make it even. Okay, I made it across, let's get going. So we're gonna make our way onto the tall grasslands now, it's the heart of our reserve. So think you're more common animals here in Africa. Or better yet, what did you want to see the most here today on the reserve? What did, why'd you come for it? 
Lions, okay, what else? Cheetah, fast cat, elephant, alright. Cats, well that's cheating. Anything else? Elephants, alright, good choice, good choice. Speaking of an elephant, check this tree out here on our right side. It's called a baobab tree, or the baobab. Also known as the upside down tree. So you want to keep an eye out for these trees in the future because it's a good place to find elephants, alright? Big trees. We're gonna head on in. We got some rather big horns out there and a giraffe walking around, so let's get closer. Hang on, my friends, hang on. It's gonna be a little rough out here. It's a lot of bumpy holes out there. Yeah. See my stickers up here? See the one? Yep, there you go. My favorite sticker right there. Come over right there. See the gazelle by the pile of logs? Little guy. That's a springbok right there. Those little gazelles are only about two to three feet tall. You can see a couple more around the reserve. But don't mock their size. See all this tall grass? I imagine the springbok is going to walk back. Yep. <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? Yep. They're quite adorable. Those little gazelles can jump about six to eight feet straight up into the air. We're about six feet off the ground right now, to give you an idea. <laughs> so, skip across the reserve, essentially, but the term is called pronking. It's like a bounce, yeah. They're called pronking. And they can get up to speeds about 50 to 60 miles per hour while doing that. Yeah, no, they're pretty quick. And then when they have the energy, they'll do that. Now, these are not hyenas. Try again. <laughs> yeah, stay seated for me, guys. Please stay seated. Sit down for me, please. Yeah, sit down for me, please. Keep the little ones on laps or benches, my friends. Little ones, sit down for me, please. Hey, guys, you gotta sit down, please. You gotta sit down. I can't move this truck, please. Sit down. Fifth wall, fourth row, the white shirt, please. Sit down for me, the ponytail. Thank you. Now, these are known as African wild dogs, by the way. Also known as the pizza dogs, yeah, they're not hyenas. Hyenas are different, they're completely different. They have an arched back. Now, you say cute, but these guys are actually the best hunters in Africa. They have about an 80% catch ratio in their prey, and their bite is enough to break your bone in one second. I don't know too much about it. <laughs> these guys are cute. There's a lot of these spring box for you guys. There is not babies, no, they're full grown adult spring box. Oh, oh she's just walking around. You look like a little tiny cinnamon. <laughs> I got a little baby giraffe coming up on my left side. Say baby, but it's a lot taller than you. <laughs> Keep in mind, we're about six feet off the ground right now. Judging from that, it's about six to eight. Did you build that? No. No, a little bug built that. That's right. Another name for a giraffe, by the way, in Swahili, giraffes are known as twiggas. Twig, god, twig, like a twig, and then a god. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who came up with the name. I don't come up with the names. All I know is, like, for a wildebeest, for example, it's at the African National Universe. I kind of named them after the term uh, wildebeest, which just means wild beast. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's literally, that's literally what it means. Little beast, which is trying to translate to wild beast. It's actually, believe it or not, an antelope. Speaking of which, they're right there on my right side for the little beast. They're a type of antelope. They're actually the largest migrating uh, mammals in the world. The only animal that beats them is us, the humans. And Chloe on my right. One of the larger cattle. Oh, they call it cattle, by the way, here on my right. You see all big horns there. These animals are protected, by the way. And actually, believe it or not, some parts of Africa, they're not served for that purpose. They're actually used as a symbol of wealth. So I don't know if you want to really want to eat your money. That's pretty bad idea. Yeah, the more employees you have on your reserve, the more rich you are. Or on your farmlands, I should say. Those horns are hollow, by the way. You didn't know. They're both, both female like males. Both genders have horns. Giraffe on the right. Giraffe on the right. They're actually pulled to this giraffe over here that's hiding. Trying to hide. It's not really doing a good job. Straight ahead. It's going to be on my left side. Get your cameras ready because I can't stop for too long. Wow. Jigsaw pattern. Now these are known as Maasai giraffes. The 
The ones over at, uh, what you said, the little animal kingdom that you were saying about? Those are reticulated. I know above our heads they say reticulated, but that's kind of, kind of an error that we need to fix. These are my side giraffes, different breed. Reticulated have a net pattern, they're a little bit darker, like a white outline. So these guys have a little bit lighter, with jigsaw pattern. Now the Swahili word for an elephant is known as Dembo. So we got a couple of Dembos. This is actually the, no, T, or the T. Yeah, On my left side, these are known as Mandrels. <laughs> the largest monkeys in Africa, they have vibrant colored faces and vibrant colored behinds. The biggest spread is the Alpha. They call them. Well, African elephants, by the way, are typically lives in herds of female only. Now we'll be ruled by a female ruler, the matriarch. So they live in a matriarch society. However, when they males turn to a certain age, around 13 years old, that's when they'll go off on their own and live an isolated life. The only time the males will form their own groups is known as a bachelorette. Mating season. Otherwise they just do their own thing. Yeah. Just not works. The road is closed back there, but that's alright. It's a bit of an older route. Didn't really see much about it because this route up ahead has been a little bit more stable recently. Lots of duct tape, you know. Should hold out the bridge for the time being. And, you know, try. Try on me to see this truck. This is my practice. Could be worse. I'm going to take out two wheels off. Alright, let's get going. As fast as I can go. Whopping 8 miles per hour for you guys. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, everything we've seen so far on this reserve is going faster than my truck. <laughs> I could say it was. Coming up on my left side here, we have elephants on the left. Look at that. Oh, really? They're the elephant bird. Heidi. Probably a dog, maybe. I don't know. Elephant! <laughs> she was asking where were they last night. Elephant! Animals do what they want. Believe it or not, they can hide behind these strange big trees, those baobabs, remember? There's a really big one coming up here in just a bit. Bird? Remember those upside down trees? Those baobabs can store about 2,000 gallons of water inside those trees. And if elephants can't find water, they can use their tusks to poke hole in these trees to get water out of the tree, or by breaking off some of the bark and chewing on it. Yeah. So it's actually really smart animals. They can find water in the most barren situations. See the baby? We're gonna get closer. We'll stop for her. We get closer. Come on, guys, hold on. You don't see the baby. You will in just a second if we try to get closer before she walks away. No, it's not the baby. The baby's over here. No, trust me. You'll know what's the baby when you see her. <laughs> There's one. She's still here. There she is. That's the baby. <laughs> I thought they covered themselves in dirt and mud, by the way. It's like a monster sunscreen. And then they were going to roll in the mud and dirt and then they were rinse or anything. Yeah, I think my arms are. works for them. Coming up on the left side here, we have the greater gringos. Lightest colored flamingo species in the world. You see the gray ones? Those are flamingo chicks. Maybe flamingo chicks. I'll say gray for the first year of their life. They get their pinkest color by the year after. Uh, one of the few birds that will actually help the parents who take turns taking care of it. Yeah, bird. Now we're going to head on towards our eastern part of the savannah now, home to some other bigger animals. Let's look at it. A lot of these animals that we see here so far, such as the zebras we're going to see here in just a second. Unfortunately, they are losing their habitat, though, due to such a high demand for electronics nowadays in this age. I know that sounds weird, but let me explain. There's a mineral inside your phone called Goltan. It's using electronics to hold electrical currents. It's inside. So one way, and that's actually being dug out in Africa right now, so one way to help save the land for these beautiful creatures, which is to recycle any old electronics you don't use anymore, for that matter. You guys that have those brick satellite phones from the, from the 90s, I know I'm looking at you. 
I'll use them. <laughs> By the way, zebras are black with white stripes under their nose and their hooves. They have a black undercoat with white stripes on top. Also, they have enough back power to break a lion's jaw. It's the same concept for a horse, same concept for a zebra. Don't stand behind them. They both like the kick. Those are wild animals. Left side, top right corner, you see it? Cheetah. You see all the grass and how the brush is green in? Greenery is going up to the top right. There's two cheetahs hiding behind the trees up there. Left side, top right corner. It's really hard to see. People are doing this around us extremely well. They go around 60 to 70 miles per hour for only 20 second bursts. One of the only big cat species in the world that does not roar. They chirp like a bird and purr like a house cat. I'm trying to see if we can find another one. I don't have any luck on this side, so we're gonna actually keep on going. And they are really good at hiding. Kind of a, I don't know, for This up ahead is a cold beer occupation. Pretty good place to find lion activity, kind of like that sleepy one over there. The males do the protecting for the pride, the females do all the hunting. What is the swan you word for lion? No, that's so easy. It's one you leave for lion. Oh, you know it. Simba would buy. There you go. So we got a pride of Simba. So we see more than one. It is. So this is one you leave for I see a crash of rhinos. We're going to get closer to the rhinos in a little bit. Just keep your eyes on the lions for me. I will stop. I'm just trying to get a better view. We got zebras and rhinos on the right. We're gonna come back to them. Matata. We got a pride of symbols right there, all just resting for the time being. They're usually most active at night time, just be aware of that. Pretty much the whole day. Ah, warthogs. Yeah, largest bird mammals in the world. Great to domestic pigs. Razor sharp tusks. Just be careful around them. I've heard sightings of baby warthogs in the reserve, but I haven't seen them lately. Most likely like they're hiding with the mothers. What is it? Uh, we got a crash of rhinos, one of my favorite animals here at this reserve. Right, well, we'll make a quick stop. Well, they go about 35 miles per hour. I only go about eight. They are territorial animals, but as long as they don't feel threatened or harm in any way, shape, or form, they kind of just do their own thing, and we do our own thing. Pretty cool. Yeah, these are ostrich eggs right behind the rhinos. Now the term white rhino is actually incorrect, my friends. These guys are great. They're actually they're supposed to be called the white rhino, which means white. For the white shape, not for the color. Now the ostrich is terrifying, absolutely terrifying bird coming up on my right side here. Yeah, they will. They're actually, that's more of a myth. Now they usually like to keep their heads up and kind of do what they're doing right now. Sort of. <laughs> Terrifying bird. They like to stop in the truck and stare at me. Yeah. Try to stay away from it at all costs. You can see their eyes. Their brain is smaller than their eye. Yeah. So they're like a giant chicken. That's the best way to explain it. Right, yeah, we're gonna make our way into our last part of our reserve now, called Magani Glen. One of these animals here on my right side. Yeah. These are called the Simitar Horned Orcs. A beautiful desert type of antelope. They can reflect sunlight with their coat. And they don't start sweating until they reach a body temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. They also kind of look like a toasted marshmallow. Now, here's some bad news. Unfortunately, these beautiful orcs are extinct in the wild right now due to being overhunted for their hides and their horns. But, they're still found in conservation areas, reserves, and protected lands around the world. So one of our goals is to get their population up in size. And they're doing really well. So if you keep an ear out, my next year we'll come back in the wild at the end of this year. So who knows? Conservation does work, it just takes time. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make our way back to the water's outpost now. Do we have fun here this morning? What is happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost track. Good, good, good. What's your favorite animal you've seen here today? Elephant. Shout out. Tell me what Baby elephant. Giraffes, okay, good choice. Remember those animals you just said? Because here's what I want you to do. 
talk about these animals, spread the word, because a super word of mouth these guys can do a lot of good, especially for the rhinos. It's my favorite animal, my favorite choice. Such a majestic creature, but unfortunately these guys are disappearing from our face of our earth due to being poached and also loss of habitat. So one way to help save these beautiful creatures is to recycle, get them more known. Or if you want to see picture on any social media platform, for example, they do a lot of good too. You know, pictures are worth thousands of words. All I ask for you guys to do is just spread the awareness, is all. I'm not asking you guys to donate, that is completely up to you, that's your choice. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, so make sure you got the impressive blinds, your bags, your cameras, don't forget about your children too. Bring everything with you, don't leave anything behind. This has been a Rocket Production.